talk about uh, the boys across the pond in Wrexham. Yeah, uh, if you yeah. Uh, if you woke up in the United States and you were turned on the game and you went to go make yourself a cup of coffee to get yourself sit in, I think you may have missed the only goal. Um, right. <laughs> uh, Paul Mullen scores. Seconds. Yes, it, it was docked at 15.8 seconds. He scored a goal. Um, mm. And then that was it. That's all she yeah. wrote. <laughs> so <laughs> there was some white knuckle situation. If you were watching the whole entire game, uh, you know, defensive kind of let some things get through. We had some good goalie stops, but all in all, uh, they come away with a victory one, one to zero against Rotherham. Uh, they are currently seven two two uh, tied for, I'm sorry. They're in second place behind Tom Brady's team. I don't know why I can't get away from this guy. He's a part owner of the Raiders. He announces <laughs> my football games and now he's uh, owning a football club. I know. Um, right? It's crazy. Uh, so the next match is against Huddersfield, uh, which is tomorrow. And then we play another one against Charlton on Saturday. So uh, quick and easy, just like how the game was. And uh, we're on to Bay FC. All right. So Bay FC, a game that your boy was at. So I went to San Jose for sporting events two days in a row. Um, They get the one nothing win against the North Carolina Courage on Saturday. Uh, That was fan appreciation night, too. It's the last home game of the season. Uh, the goal came in the 83rd minute. Abby Dahl Kemper crashes the net and puts a cross from Rachel Kundanji past the goalkeeper. That was on a set piece uh, from a foul that happened just outside the box. And that goal made uh, made life pretty damn sweet in the stadium, man. Uh, like uh, my voice was not at 100 percent for the Sharks game because uh, I used it <laughs> at the uh, at the soccer game the night before. So. Their current record is 10 wins, one loss, uh, one draw, excuse me, and 14 losses. I was like, that's backward. Uh, yeah, one loss. They better be yeah, in first no, place. Wish, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, 31 points. Uh, they are eighth in the uh, league, which is the last playoff spot. There is one game left in the season. That game happens at Houston, the Houston Dash, on Saturday, November 2nd. So there's uh, just a couple of other notes for the NWSL at large. Uh, Racing Louisville, the team chasing Bay FC, they get a win in the 89th minute. They score off of a corner kick to defeat the Portland Thorns. The team in seventh place also hasn't uh, clinched their playoff spot. So all three of these teams right there, you know, um, holding pinkies. They're right there, man. Um, so the playoff bracket is coming into focus a little bit. Uh, Bay FC can clinch a playoff spot with a win or draw at Houston. Racing okay. Louisville is three points back, but currently seven goals better on goal differential. So they would win a tiebreaker with Bay FC. So if they win and Bay FC loses, Racing gets that playoff spot. Mm, okay. Um, okay. Okay. So uh, Racing Louisville plays at San Diego Wave on Sunday. So they're going to know ahead of time if they're alive or not before they even kick off because the game, uh, Bay FC's game is on Saturday. So if Bay FC wins or gets a draw, it doesn't matter. Racing can't do anything about it. They're out. But if, if Bay FC doesn't take care of business against, against what, uh, what is the worst team in the league, uh, they, are, they are dead last, Houston Dash. Um, so if you don't handle business, then, you know, you kind of deserve to not make the playoffs at that point. Um, Portland Thorns, they need a win or a draw as well in their final game. They're hosting Angel City, uh, on Friday. That's going to be so, a tough one. So that's going to, uh, that's, that's a little interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, Angel City got deducted those points earlier this year. Um, they they wouldn't be able to make the playoffs anyway, though, because, um, they ended up, uh, drawing, getting a draw against uh, the Utah Royals. So both of those teams got eliminated because nobody won. Uh, so yeah, so here's the situation. Portland Thorns are in seven. Bay FC is in eight. Racing is in nine. Portland and Bay FC both have 31 points. Portland has the better goal differential. So that's why they're in seven. If Bay, uh, Portland or Bay wins, they, they win and you're in. Right. If either of them draw, they're in. If either of them lose, that's when racing at uh, Louisville can take over. And if both Bay FC and Portland lose, Portland actually owns the tiebreaker as well, unless they lose by 11, 
12 goals, something like that. Like, so, so, you know, a a statistical impossibility. Um, But so, so Portland, the only way Portland doesn't make the playoffs is if Bay FC wins racing wins and they lose. Okay. So that's why they haven't officially clinched yet. Gotcha. But even then there's like, that comes down to goal differential as well. Uh, Racing is minus four currently thorns are minus one. So, uh, assuming uh, if, if racing wins by two goals and Portland loses by one goal, then that's when it really comes into play. So it, 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 it gets really chaotic if, um, if, if Portland and Bay lose, but, but win and doesn't matter. So, th- so that's, yep. the, that's the bottom line. Control your um, own destiny. That's right. Just win. So ha- handle your own business. Don't, don't, don't ask for miracles from somebody else, you know? Mm-hmm. So let's just uh, talk real quick about the U.S. men's national team. They end up losing that game uh, against Mexico in Guadalajara on Tuesday last week, a 2-0 loss in an international friendly. And that, playing nobody's playing nobody's. Yeah, so they they, okay. they sent home uh, like like Christian Pulisic got uh, they he, they got sent back to the t- uh, the team. Uh, uh, they, shout, they shout out Christian Pulisic. He was the man of the match in their most recent game. Got that win for for AC Milan. So. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, dude, he's um, he's our best player so far. <laughs> so I hope others step up into to the plate here when once uh, Poach really gets his hands on them and uh, really starts making some moves here. But uh, uh, it looks like Poach is already starting to make some moves here. So what do we got here? All right. So uh, I don't know. This is oh no, this is the oh, women's this is the women's. women's. I'm this sorry. This is the women's team. So yeah, you're. Um, so, so the, the, the men's international window has now closed. The women's one is about to open up and that's why the, the, the final game for the NWSL, uh, you know, is happening yep. in two weeks instead of next week. So, um, the 26 player roster for upcoming matches versus uh, two versus Iceland and one versus Argentina. They're all going to be happening in the next, like, you know, week and a half or so, um, 18 of the 22 players who went to the Olympics were included. Um, injuries are keeping Trinity Rodman and Corey Bethune and Tierna Davidson off the roster. Crystal Dunn was left off due to per- other personal commitments. So additions to the roster include Ashley Sanchez from uh, NC Courage, Alyssa Thompson from Angel City, Olivia Moultrie from the Portland Thorns, who probably uh, she had her own injury, and that's why she didn't make the Olympic roster. Um, Haley Mace, the defender from KC Current, she uh, her last call up was two years ago. So uh, good on her for getting back. Uh, Emma Sears, her first call up uh, from Racing Louisville. Yasmin Ryan from Gotham FC is getting her first shot. Eva Gatino from uh, Paris Saint Germain, and defender Alyssa Melanson from Bay FC. She's getting her first ever call of any kind. Like she was never on the under twenties or the under twenty threes or the under seventeens. But she's getting her first ever shot with the um, with the big, you know, national team. Uh, yeah, she's man. getting called up. So I'm so we're so hyped for Alyssa Melanson. She's played incredibly well, especially basically since um, she took over about, you know, 12 games or, or so ago. And uh, she's a she's a highlight reel of just like, you know, slide tackling, taking the ball away from all kinds of really talented defenders. She's played extremely well, uh, um, especially since Abby Dahlkemper has showed up as well. Um, uh, that's a little bit of a surprise for another time. I'm kind of shocked that Abby didn't make the get a call, but whatever. That's fine. Moving on. Um, Lily Johannes uh, is currently trying to choose between USA and Netherlands as to which team she'll represent. Uh, she So she didn't get called up uh, for this roster. And Katarina Macario, who was on the Olympic roster, but then got injured before the Olympics even started. So she is working her way back from injury and trying to build up the minutes. So she's not being called up either. And none of the players that were on the U.S. youth national team that just won bronze at the under 20 World Cup. um, None of them are on the team. Uh, They wanted those players to reintegrate with their club teams instead. Uh, The next call up camp will be in January in Los Angeles with the futures camp probably happening at the same time. And so that's where a lot of the under 20 players and possibly several others are going to be there. And that's when they're, it's going to be like a double camp, basically probably like 40 players or something like that, maybe 50. So uh, a lot of exciting uh, times happening with the, with the, uh, with women's soccer uh, with playoffs around the corner as well. Um, they, they already have the top four seeds are locked in. We just don't know what position they are, but they did actually announce uh, game times. So, so that's fun. Nice. 
Uh, Orlando it. Pride will be playing on Friday, November 8th. Kansas City Current is going to be playing on Saturday the 9th. Washington and New York are going to be playing uh, on the 10th on Sunday. So we just got to get them some opponents. And that's what uh, the uh, the games on November 1st through the 3rd are going to be.